Hello there my very good friends on today's wrestling news. Has CM Punk really changed? WWE stars are iffy. I'll tell you how CM Punk reacted to his Raw promo getting cut for time. We've got the real reason Triple H wasn't at Raw. And WWE's plans for Jade Cargill have been revealed. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the news. CM Punk, can you trust him? Half of the WWE roster are a little bit iffy, and that's the exact word used uh, in the report, uh, which is nice to see, bringing it back, iffy, 2023. Uh, This is from PW Insiders. No, it's not. It's from PW Torches, Wade Keller. Ah. Getting my PWs all wrong. Um, And it's a pretty interesting report. It paints a broadly positive picture of the backstage reaction Mm. to Punk on Raw, like the vibes were generally good. Uh, Punk was in a good place, yada yada yada. Uh, but I'll read. I'll just read this thing to you. Um, it's noted that the lines in Punk's promo about it being a family reunion and that bit he said about everyone's happy, I'm back and all that <laughs> stuff. That was broadly true. Um, they noted, like sources have indicated, that Punk seemed humble. That was the word used, and very nice, but not very evil uh, on his <laughs> Raw return. Not yet, at least. Of course, he broke the internet at Survivor Series, and then he was on Raw cutting that promo. Um, he returned to WWE with a bit of re- reputation, of course, mm-hmm. not just for the nature of his departure in 2014, which I would say is more of a WWE management problem than a yeah. CM Punk problem. Um, But the way he's spoken about the company since being out of it and stuff, and and he's never been shy and he's never really held back. And also the nature of his AEW departure, he had a fight with a man and he got fired. Uh, That creates a certain reputation about a person. Um, Nonetheless, PW in tortures, PW in torture. (laughs) I've literally combined the two of them. Fantastic. PW in torture. (laughs) Pro wrestling in torture. Good. Uh, I am not working today. I need that for coffee. Oh, yeah. Shout out to the guys at Good Bruce. But some wrestlers are skeptical of the situation, Mm -hmm. it's noted here. Uh, Apparently around half of WWE's roster are iffy on whether or not the way Punk is projecting himself, these changes are here to stay or even representative of who he actually is. Uh, Nonetheless, a positive first impression. Uh, Keller called the situation necessary, uh, given the vibe that Punk was coming Mm -hmm. in with and all of that. Uh, But some people, it sounds, still have some convincing to do, and I think that's quite understandable. Yeah, exactly. I think think you can see where they're coming from with all this. I think uh, the the locker room are taking the same attitude to when me and Andy announced we're going on a diet in January. We'll believe (laughs) it when we see it. Sure thing, pal. Um, But it's a good start. I think that's the main thing we can say. But yeah, understandable to have reservations because it all seemed perfect for Punk in AEW when things first started. And then, well... We all know what happened following that. I think a good sign actually leads into into my first story today, Andy, is how he reacted to his promo being cut for time. Obviously, um, the show was uh, a bit all over the place and Punk only came out for the last sort of five, ten minutes. Uh, We'll talk a little bit about uh, people in charge of that in a second. Um, But according to Five or Select, Punk reacted well to having his time cut for that. Um, He obviously came out and cut a promo, like I said, after uh, Randy Orton had destroyed Dominic Mysterio. Uh, Fightable sources indicate that Punk's reaction appeared to be fine, (laughs) which is kind of the best thing you can hope for, really. Uh, There was no producer listed for CM Punk's promo, but another source knew that the promos, uh, or they knew the promo's overall direction. It wasn't exactly scripted word for word, but they knew where where he was going with it, what he was going to say about family reunions and that sort of thing, and... Maybe even the, I'm not here to make friends, I'm here to make money line that he concluded with off mic. Um, but there was no shots at AEW that were expected. And obviously, no actually, none actually happened. Um, the line about everyone's happy that I'm here may have been slightly tongue in cheek, but he was in a good mood. Uh, he was even joking apparently with people at Gorilla Position before hitting the ring. Tentatively pleased I am, I don't know why I'm talking about Yoda, um, <laughs> with how things have gone so far with Punk, because I think it's all well and good returning in Chicago, um, but when you have to get down to the nitty gritty of day to day, week to week WWE stuff, that's all going to be what, part of what got him down in the first place. It'd be so funny if the story coming out of this was this promo was cut and he punched Bruce Pritchard in the face, like, it was just, <laughs> the cycle repeats. Uh, not that I necessarily think that's going to happen in <laughs> WWE, um, but look, we're, we're talking funniest possible outcomes here. Yeah. That, that's one that Bruce Pritchard can probably take a smack. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. He's maybe. been in the business long enough. Uh, he knows what to expect. Not that I'm advocating for violence. No, no, it's no. Just, sometimes it's funny. Um, <laughs> Not violence, punching 
brother love. I don't know what we're doing here. Um, this is uh, good to hear, I guess. Uh, promo being cut, not ideal, no. of course. Um, but there's a way of handling those things, and the right way of handling those things is okay. It's a bit annoying, but well, I can't do anything about it. Yeah, the, the punk promo is sort of divided opinion. Um, I'm still of the camp of. Let's see where he goes with this next week. Mm. Uh, the, the let it play out thing is a is a, a tired excuse within wrestling, but I do think that it wasn't a coincidence that uh, Rollins was out there earlier calling him a hypocrite, and then Punk came out and did a big rah rah. Oh, it's good to be home. And was a hypocrite. Yeah. yeah. So it's like it does kind of. Matter. I'm still right in the middle. I'm right in the middle with it. I thought the promo was really quite bad. I think it's fair to be disappointed by it, but I also think it's heading somewhere. Yes. So you've got people over here who are like. That was terrible, it could never be good. You got people over here who are like, let them cook, all of that. I'm, I'm here, I'm I, here. I think Hamlet kind of nailed this on the on the Raw Review he podcast. He never nails anything, he's got no good opinion. <laughs> he, he said, because I, I was arguing, yeah, look, this is going somewhere and they've clearly just started the story now for uh, whether it be Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, yeah. clearly a feud between Seth Rollins and CM Punk. Um, but. I, I think Hamlet was right when he said, I think maybe you could have done that maybe next week and just had the big uh, punks back. Oh, Jesus, it's punk on a live microphone promo and then kind of got into the story, which I think is, is arguably fair enough. But I can see both sides with this. Mm, I am in, I am on no side. Mm. And how do you I feel about sides. punk? Do you feel iffy about punk? Let us know in the comment section mm. below do you using feel the hashtag. Iffy. Do you feel effy about punk? Ah, Effie's had some thoughts on punk. He has. Effie, I love, I love his clips that come out. They're just so much fun. You see his recent stuff on Ronda Rousey. Yep. My goodness. <laughs> Shout to Effie. He's a legend, man. Yeah. He's great. Um, what other things rhyme with iffy and effy? That, that, that's literally it. Cool. Stiffy. <laughs> Leffy. The beer. <laughs> I don't know. Let us know in the comments section below. This is a disaster of a video, isn't it? It's fine. I mean, this is just a catastrophe. Because, because Triple H was meant to be running today's news, but he wasn't here. Yeah, Speaking so of which... Bruce Pritchard is a... <laughs> why wasn't Sorry, Bruce? Bruce. Yeah, it did. Why isn't... Why wasn't Triple H on Raw? Why wasn't week? he? Uh, he was doing business. Uh... He Triple was doing H a business? He was having a poop. Uh, no, Triple H was not at Raw this week. This was reported by PW Insider shortly after the show, and the same outlet has now reported on why he wasn't there. It's because Triple H, who is WWE's chief content officer, and Nick Khan, who is WWE's president, were in Los Angeles working on uh, negotiations for the media rights deal for Raw, TV deal. Ah. Basically, they're working on the TV deal. Now, you can understand why that might take precedent over a rank and file episode of television. It also kind of explains why Raw was a bit crap this week. I agree. Because yeah, Bruce Pritchard was writing it. It felt like I'm <laughs> on a real run and it's like something's off here and yeah. now I know why. Yeah, there you go. It explains that a little bit. Papa H wasn't there. Still cooking. And uh, you, you know, that's what, always what happens. Always what happens mm. when you take the pot off the stove. Um, so TV's going to be a bit weird, uh, a bit different next year. Smackdown, leaving Fox. Going back to cable, it's going on to USA Network. USA Network uh, currently has Raw and NX, NXT, but NXT's going over. What on earth was the, the name? The CW? Of, the CW, the cruiserweight. <laughs> uh, and Raw is still very much up for grabs. AEW stuff is still up for grabs as well. Uh, it's going to look a lot different in 2024, I think. Uh, as long as the days don't change, no, it's absolutely fine. This is it. Companies are going to get paid. You can guarantee on that. Uh, but yeah, they're doing raw business in it. Yeah, it's one of those things, isn't it? It was a huge raw. Obviously, lots of new eyes going to the product, and it felt like they kind of whiffed it a little bit, in my opinion. Um, but now it's understandable why. Like it wasn't like Triple H thought this punk, this raw wasn't important, despite the fact it was CM Punk's first one back, and he decided to have a little holiday. Go on and go and see the sites or whatever. No, TV deals will take precedent over a single episode of Monday Night Raw because in the grand scheme of things, that's what they're working towards. Um, but I'm intrigued now, doubly, to see what next week's Raw looks like, whether they can you know, get back onto that runner form that they were on. It wasn't an awful episode of Raw, it just didn't feel in the same vein of what we've got used to seeing yeah. uh, this year, arguably, it on Monday Night Raw. Okay. Ever since Vince pissed off, basically. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. Like, it turns out that when uh, the geriatric old men who are uh, products of a bygone era, uh, when they write the show, it's a bit worse. Mm. Who knew? 
Anyway. Yes Men, I believe uh, CM Punk once called them. Yeah, well, he won't be doing that for a while, will he? He said some <laughs> other words around that, but I'm not going to repeat them. Oh, he uh, punched Bruce Pitcher in the <laughs> face, as we learned. <laughs> well, let's move over and talk about WWE's plans for Jade Cargill. Obviously, there was a big fanfare when they signed her. Uh, she popped up on, well, basically every show. Um, but they're kind of slow playing her arrival on screen in ring in WWE. Uh, this comes from a report from uh, PW Insider's Mike Johnson. Uh, apparently, uh, rather than training at WWE's Performance Center, Cargill is at the Winter Park, Florida facility. A couple of one to two days a week. Uh, that schedule is going to continue going forward. No official date on her uh, arrival properly yet, uh, or whether there's going to be a timescale for her coming in NXT regular. Um, She's a strong talent for the future, the promotion believes. Uh, they don't want to rush her in effectively, um, which matches with her training schedule. They're not, you know, getting her in every single day of the week to be ready for, you know, uh, the start of the year or something. Yeah. Complete speculation on my behalf. Triple H obviously talked about Jay Cargill on the uh, Survivor Series press conference. He said, it's interesting, when she came in, we talked about her development and where she would land, but what the development was. I want to make sure that no matter what she's thrown, what is thrown at Jay Cargill, she's ready. And no fault of her own, I think she was limited in that. <laughs> uh, so the idea is we exposed her, we made her be seen, people are understanding and they're waiting, they're excited for her to come, and when she does, it is going to be massive. People took this as a bit of a sly dig at AEW. It's not even sly, it's just mm, a dig. Yeah. Uh, and that's why it's, it's funny. Yeah. Like, stuff like that's funny to me. Uh, I'm a bit surprised to learn that she's only at the PC one or two days a week. Yeah. I've, I thought they, 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 they would maybe want to, to get her in like full time and have her uh, get ready. Uh, or, or what they believe. A lot of speculation right. on a rumble debut, for example. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Maybe that'll be a bit too soon now. But hey, look, it's not for uh, two out of shape dorks on the internet to dictate what somebody's set uh, training schedule. Plus, it's, be. it's basically nearly Christmas, isn't it? So yeah, yeah let's uh, have Christmas. And all wrestlers just have Christmas off. They just put, take their, put their feet up, yeah. don't they, for a couple of weeks? Yeah, like exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's the, it's not like they work Christmas Day or anything. Yeah. Jeez, you remember when they did that? Dark days, man. Dark. Days. I mean, I'd love to go to watch a wrestling show on Christmas Day evening, but. I wouldn't want to have to work it. Yeah, nah, I'm like eight beers deep by that point. I'm not going to no wrestling show. I, I'm not leaving the couch. No. I'm not leaving the couch after 4 p.m. No. Like, if you think you're getting me off of that, you're peeling me off of the fabric. Ah, uh -uh. nah, nah. Training, performing, <laughs> cheesy peeps. But it, it, it is clever the way that I think that they've done this in terms of when Joe, Jay Cargill shows up, a lot of fans aren't just going to be like, who the hell's that? Yeah. They're going to be like, oh yeah, that was the one they made the big fanfare about with Definitely. What was the show she she turned up on? Was it Fast Lane? One kickoff? of the one of them B B level shows. Yeah. The, the, yeah. And yeah. yeah, she's popped up and you know had a face off with. Well, she sort of face off from the crowd with Becky Lynch. Chaz. Chaz Flair. Yeah, look, they've got clearly got huge plans for her. Yeah. And they're just they wanted to be ready, and um, they're not going the usual route of like, hey, you go and work some matches in NXT, they're just doing a different route with things, but yeah. I'm very excited for when Jay Cargill arrives. Yeah, I'm glad they just haven't like put her on NXT level up or something and gone, mm -hmm. hey, get your reps, kid. Uh, getting your reps is obviously very useful, mm -hmm. uh, but Jay Cargill's a star and she yeah. has big star potential. So yeah, uh, like I, I, I've always enjoyed Jay Cargill's work and I'm looking forward to seeing what she does in WWE. Let us know so. where you'd like to see her show up, what show, what pay-per-view, premium live event or whatever, and who you'd like to see a feud with first in the comments section. But I'll move on to your Twitter questions. At what culture WWE, of course, if you want to get in touch with us. First question today comes from Mark Smith. Cheers as always for the question, Mark. Hello, fake journalists. So this must be directed at you and everyone else. Uh, I want a Swerve versus Danielson final. Nice. Yeah, in the Continental nice. Classic. But I expect it will be Moxley versus Kingston. What do you guys want and expect it to be? It's going to be Moxley versus Kingston. Yeah, for I can't sure. agree with you on that one. For sure. Um, I think that they're going to go back to that story that they kind of forgot about a little bit uh, after the. The middle finger thing in the mm -hmm. in the in the what was what was it a stadium stampede one of them yeah of what was really anarchy in the arena uh, if we're at, at Wembley it was great either way yeah uh, I think that's what it's going to be and that's also what I want because they're my two favourites uh, well uh, two of my favourites uh, give you an alternative answer for what I want uh, you know what would be the weirdest most fun most stupid insane mental match of all time what? Brody King versus Mark Briscoe get that's for the freaks give it to us. Give it to me. Oh, now I'm sad they're in different leagues. Yeah. Well, finals, man. They can be. Yeah. Well, Mark's lost two now, but. Yeah, hey. you better win a few in this. It's, it's, yeah. it's one of those ones where I, I'm, I'm a hypocrite because I was like, you can't have any just people in there in there to take losses because you can just have Daniel Garcia with the way he is to take losses right now, and he's mint, obviously. Um, but then when they pulled it, announced the brackets and everyone was loving it. 
Now I'm like, well, no one can lose. <laughs> They're like, but Jay Lethal aside, Jay Lethal obviously uh, legend, but is someone that kind of is in there in that bracket. You so feel is Mark, like, I think. But he's yeah. going to go zero and five. Oh, I hope not. He's going to go well, I hope if they do do that, <laughs> do do. Um, like with, uh, like I suggested with Garcia, they do something with it rather than just like, well, guess that guy sucks now. Yeah, this is the, the follow up is uh, the important thing, and they've not been so great at that with a lot of people uh, recently. So. Mo uh, Mox Kingston final, sorry, yeah, for Yeah, me. it's good, it's good. Uh, they're the best, so. But yeah, Swerve and Swerve Danielson, absolutely fine on that one as well. Yeah. Uh, next question today comes from Mark Solid with a brilliant picture <laughs> of uh, Triton, dressed like one of the outrunners. Nice one. Uh, morning, top news, guys. Um, Triton is set high and he's ready for the snow. We've had a light dusting today and almost broke my neck on the walk into work, which... It's feeling a little bit better. Yeah. Thanks for everyone for the lovely... Slippery. You know who else is slippery? Where is he? He's right here. Is he ready for the winter? Does he have a winter coat? Um, he does not look ready for the winter, <laughs> does he? Must be honest. He looks ready for his daily dose of cocaine. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Who isn't? Yeah, he gets that. He saw the white dusting outside and got very yeah. excited. This is this is why I don't like him. I don't like being around people who are on drugs. I find it very unpleasant. Right. And uh, this guy is the worst. So. <laughs> Get out of here. Get lost, you. Uh, thoughts on who will be the first person to pin punk in WWE and why is it Dirty Dom? <laughs> They're not going to do that. No. Um, <laughs> uh, Roman Reigns. Ooh. I, th I think that they're going to preserve him quite a lot. Uh, I don't know if you'll see something like we saw in the Ricky Starks feud where like he's upset and then... No. Where he's upset in like, a loss and he comes back. I think they'll just do Roman and he'll beat him. Yeah, I... I I don't know, I saw a really intriguing bit of booking from Ibu of Wrestle Purists on Twitter uh, for the, the Punk plans. I think he had uh, Punk fighting Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship at the Rumble, uh, losing, but then going on to fight Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania. And I was like, well, if you're not doing the world title with Punk at WrestleMania, that's a kind of decent second option. That'll do, won't it? Yeah. That'll do. <laughs> Roman's, I think Roman might be a good shout, although... Yeah, it's a... Yeah. It's one of those, it, it, it might be a real uh, test of how things have changed within WWE if they put Punk over Roman. That'd be good. I'd Gunther, be maybe? Yeah, the big man. Like they're making him seem like an absolute monster now. I don't know what the, the scenario is that you book that feud with, but yeah, I don't see him having uh, the nuanced booking, let's say, of, of AEW in terms of like, oh, maybe he's lost a step. I think yeah. they're just going to book him to come in and kick some ass, at least in the road on the road to facing Rollins. Maybe it's Rollins. Who knows? Yeah. But uh, I mean, I'm very excited to just see him step between those ropes to wrestle. Um, hopefully, very soon. Yeah. Uh, Jacob S gives us our next question, our final question of the day. Cheers, Jacob. Uh, for the Royal Rumble, would you want Cody to enter number one, number thirty, somewhere in the middle? And why? One. Yeah, he should... One. Makes he, sense this year, he, doesn't it? He should have year. to fight his way to the end. Uh, it's classic. Full flip choice. reverse with him and Gunther? Yeah, I'm here for that. I'm here for that. Uh, <clears throat> like, obviously Gunther did... Uh, as a heel, he went from start to finish last year. Oh, he didn't win, but you know what I mean. He was in the ring the whole match. Um, which I think is fine for him because he's a workhorse. Like, that's his gimmick. He's the ring, the ring general. Mm. Um... And it, I think it was fine. But I think Cody, if he's going to finish the story, I think the most compelling way to do that now with where we're at, with where stories have gone up to this point, is to go belt to belt. And to win the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah, I, it was one, the arrival of Punk has muddied the water somewhat. I think if you'd have asked me a couple of weeks ago, I would have said Cody needs to enter at one, Gunther at 30. There was a, there's a bit of me that thinks maybe Gunther wins this time and he challenges Seth Rollins, but then in my booking, he's already lost the uh, Intercontinental Championship by this point and it doesn't look like they're going to do that anytime soon. So Punk's an intriguing one to win the Rumble. Uh, it would be a real a vote of confidence in him. And you could, there's an argument you can say, well, you just have Cody win the Chamber, for example, to face Roman. But I think the good old fashioned route of well, you're not on that show, so how have you got to fight for that title? And I know he's obviously got history with Roman and they've, they've never lost that. I just think it's cleaner, yeah, to have Cody win it for a second year in a row. And it just makes him feel like even more of a megastar. Jesus, two years in a row we're in the Rumble and this year, next year winning it from number one. I like the way they laid out both Rumbles this year. You know, Rhea obviously doing, running the gauntlet, uh, running the card or whatever phrases um and yeah cody coming in at 30 and i think the thing is people build up 30 and there was a few years that it was a bit iffy 
I don't see anyone complaining if it's Gunther. I like that. I've, Cody exhausted, like, well, I think I've taken care of most of most people. <laughs> oh, God, here comes a giant Austrian. Tremendous. Yeah. But let us know what you want to see uh, Cody do in the Rumble. Congratulations uh, to Alexa Bliss and her partner. Yes. To, to Ty and Sammy. Yes, well. I saw that post this morning. Congratulations Babies to them. Babies arriving all over the shop. It's great to see. R.I.P. Sleep. Yeah. And uh, check out this video if you're uh, just had a baby and you want to watch something else or yeah. not. Bye. <laughs>